fuel cells using hydrogen are attractive for electrifying heavy transports because of high energy density, thus complementing batteries and enabling autonomy. But how do fuel cells and batteries collaborate best in dual hybrid systems? Fuel cells take in hydrogen on the anode of an electrical circuit and air on the cathode. As a result, water, heat, and more importantly, electricity are produced. Fuel cells can be modeled with thermodynamic focus, multi-species gas, for example, or as a linear energy converter for microgrid development. The latest is the one we'll use in this session. Before building a system model, a calibration of the fuel cell component is needed to match voltage, current, and power specifications. For that purpose, we'll set up a model in Simulink and Simscape allowing us to do that task. The model of a dual hybrid system will consist of the following. Batteries, either combined in series or parallel or both. A fuel cell stack. with the supply conditions that are regulated. And DC-DC converters, in the case of the battery with voltage reference, just setting the value of voltage for the DC link, and then with the duty cycle control for the fuel cell. And that will be dependent on the state of charge of the battery. And then the load with up to three electric drives with a random duty cycle. And then finally, the supervisory logic. The fuel cell will be active only to sustain the charge of the battery. What are the insights needed to design and operate the system? Let's start with cooling requirements for the battery. And we see for a high load duty cycle, the temperature of the battery, and then the cooling required for that purpose. So the goal here is to meet requirements, but to avoid oversizing. One critical aspect to overall performance and hydrogen consumption is the intended battery charge range defined in the supervisory logic. In this case, uh, hydrogen consumption is minimized for a range between 45 and 77 Another key element is the DC link voltage set point. A higher voltage when the fuel cell kicks in accelerates the recharge process and minimizes fuel consumption. Then in that situation, the challenge becomes safety. How high can we go with that voltage? Let's go now through some results for a 10-hour operation. The battery in two states, only provider of energy and recharged by the fuel cell. Power, voltage, and current from the fuel cell stack. Energy consumption for high load. The fuel cell contributes with 80%. With low load, battery and fuel cells end up contributing evenly. So the battery doesn't need so much recharging in that situation. Let's explore how C code from the physical model is generated to enable virtual testing, for instance, hardware in the loop. So we choose some runtime or configurable parameters. And then we build the subsystem. Then code is generated. 
the HTML report helps you identifying inputs, outputs, things like configurable parameters, then where they are found in the code that was generated. Are batteries and fuel cells central in your project? Are you involved in electrifying the transportation sector? Would plant models facilitate software development? If the answer is yes, don't hesitate to reach me or your local Matrox office. We'll be happy to help you. If you find this video interesting, please check previous chapters in the series. Thanks for watching.